Hello, and welcome back to the Ninox Learning Channel. My name is Andy. I'm a Ninox programmer and trainer. And in this class, we're going to explore a very powerful function in the Ninox language, and that is the select function. This simple, flexible, and powerful command allows us to build arrays, perform complex mathematic and statistical calculations. It allows us to find specific records or groups of records in large tables. And it's critical to our ability to build dashboards and scorecards, reports, and other business intelligence assets inside of our Ninox applications. Whether you're new to Ninox or an experienced expert, the select statement is an important part of the Ninox language. And as you build more and more complex and sophisticated applications using the Ninox no-code platform, it's going to be very important for you to understand all the different ways you can apply this command. So let's go ahead and get started. For this exercise, I've built a database with a single table called Employees. And as you can see by looking at the data model, it's just one table, no links, no children, very simple, very basic. Now, before we go any further, let me remind you that this table is available in our web portal at www.nioxis.com. If you want to go ahead and log in, go to Templates, and download the template that says Using the Select Statement. You can download that to your computer. There's no passwords. It's not locked. You can get into it very easily. And you can use that to follow along in these exercises as we explore this piece of the Ninox language. So again, let's get going. Now, within this employees table, we have 100 records. And each of those records consists of five fields, or actually four fields, and a couple of formulas. First name and last name are text fields, as is the department field. The date field is the start date. This is when the employee started working with us. We have a full name field, which is the concatenated version of the name. First name plus last name. And then finally, the tenure field. This is an aging of the start date that allows us to calculate how long in years employees have been with us. It's a very simple database. We're going to add to it as we go along. And again, I encourage you to download this and follow along in the exercises on your own computer. And if you are following along, don't hesitate to hit pause, go back, rewind, look at things a couple of times. That's what these learning classes are all about. It's an opportunity for you to gain skill and comfort in using your Ninox system. So what I'm going to do is create a new table I'll click on New Table, and let's name this table Dashboard. Put one text field into the table. You don't even have to rename the field, and save your changes. Now, let's click on Dashboard to go into that table and select a new record. Now, before we do anything else, I want to work with my full screen. So I'm going to click on this plus sign to the right of the All View, that default record listing view that was created by Ninox when I created the dashboard table. I'm going to click on the plus sign, select Form, and I'm going to create a new view, a screen form view, and I'm going to call that Dashboard also, and click OK. So now we have the view with a listing of records and a full screen dashboard view. Let's move that text field out of the way, make it as small as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and put a formula field onto the screen. And by clicking on formula in my toolbox, this brings up our formula editor. Now, as we begin using the select statement, it's important to understand the syntax of the select statement. And it couldn't be easier. The word select, S-E-L-E-C-T, in all lowercase, followed by the name of the table that we wish to select. Again, if this were a whole forest with a hundred trees, we are selecting the one tree, the one table 
with which we want to work and operate, the one that we want to manipulate and extract data out of. Select table name, select employees, and click OK. Now, we don't really see anything. We can save our changes. All we have is this formula field. There's nothing to really present because the calculation, the formula behind this field is simply selecting all of the records in a table, specifically the employees table. Now you will note, for those of you paying close attention, I have not enclosed the name of the table in the single parentheses, or I'm sorry, the single quotation marks. That's not necessary because the name of the table is one word with no spaces. If I were to have a table, in this case called and I'll just rename the employees table, employee records. If that were the name of the table, then here in my formula, and you can see Ninox has done this for me automatically, we would have to enclose both words, employees records, because there's a space in the full name of the table, that name would have to be enclosed in the single quotation marks. I'm going to switch this back and just to prove to you that Ninox is a dynamic system, watch what happens when we go back to that single word table, that table called employees. And now when we go back to our dashboard, as you would expect, it's been changed back to employees, no single quotation marks. Now, as I said, this is a valid line of code. There's no errors, but there's nothing to present. There's nothing on the quote unquote front end that we can see as a result of this line of code. When we write code, the last line in the code or some line in the code is usually an instruction to Ninox to present something. For example, if I wanted this field to present the result of a mathematic calculation, I could put in the calculation, click OK, and this field would present the result. Here it's presenting 4, which is the result of the formula 2 plus 2. This formula, however, by itself, select employees, it doesn't render anything. There's nothing to present. So let's enhance this formula just a little bit and see how we can use this to not only select specific pieces or sets of information out of the employee table, but how we can also present it. The thing I want to talk about now is what we call a path. A path, as I'm sure you understand, is a way we get from one place to another. It is the directions and the steps that we take to arrive at a single place. I right now have started a journey. I've started down the path to the employees table. And I'm right there at the employees table. This line of code enables me to select it. But I have not specified a specific piece or field in the table that I want to see. Therefore, there's nothing to return. Let's change that. When defining a path, the different steps in the path are always separated with a period. And in this case, the period will be followed by the name of a specific field that I want to see, and that is the first name field. Again, we are referring to an element in our database that has a multi-word name with a space between the words. First space name. Therefore, this element reference must be and is correctly enclosed in single quotation marks. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Wow, we got a lot. In fact, we got a hundred things back. What we got, and this list goes, as you can see, I can scroll on and on and on, we got an array. 
Remember I told you that an array, A-R-R-A-Y, an array is a subset, a selection of records that we want to work with. In this case, the selection is all 100 records, and the specific piece of the record that we have asked to work with is the first name. We've selected a table, and you'll note that Ninox correctly added in the parentheses for us. We don't have to type those in. Ninox will take care of that for us. We selected a table. That was the first step in our path. Then we selected a field within that table. That was the second and final step in our path. We did not specify which record we wanted to extract a first name from. All we said is select the entire table. So it gave us every first name in the table and there are 100 of them and these are the orders in which they appear. Now let's go on to enhance this select statement just a little bit more with what we call a modifier. Let's modify the select statement to very clearly indicate which record we want to select from the employees table. We've selected the table, we've selected the field, now I'm going to use the keyword first, all lowercase f-i-r-s-t, to indicate that I want to select the first name of the first record in the selected table, which is the employee table. When we click OK, we now get Reese. If we go back to our employees table and we bring up the listing in ascending order, we do see, in fact, that the very first record is the record for Reese Hugh, who works in our product development department. Reese is the first name of the first name field of the table that has been selected in our dashboard, so that is what is being returned. And again, to review the syntax, we selected a table, defined the next step in our path by using the period, and that next step was to define a field within the selected table. And then we used this modifier first to specify which record in the selected table we want to view. And of course, I could have just as easily picked the last and the first name of the individual named in the very last record in the employee table, as we can see here, if we scroll down all the way to the bottom to record 100, is most certainly Rose Addison, a member of our tech support team. Rose is the 100th and final record created. That makes it the last record created, and that is exactly what we asked for. The last record in the selected table, the employees table, specifically the first name of that record. Now this is pretty basic simple stuff, but it does point out a couple of very important things. The first thing is the simplicity with which we can create an array. Simply typing the word select and the name of a table. We can create an array that is as small as one record. We can select the first record in this table. We can select the last record in this table. We can go on to be more specific in what we wish to select. Here we've only noted the table. We could go on to select, and I selected first name last time. Let's take the last name this time. Show me the last name of the employee in the last record of the selected table, which is the employee's table, and that is Addison. And a quick check to the table tells us that once again, Ninox is correct. Here we see the last name in the 100th record. The content of the last name field in the last record of the employee's table is most certainly Addison, specifically Rose Addison. 
Again, basic stuff, but this is a great place to begin. Now, let's shrink this field up because we're not going to display a hundred first or last names. Let's make the field a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for us to work with. And let's explore some of the ways we can apply this particular type of statement, the select statement. One of the things that we may want to know is who is our oldest employee? Who has been working for us the longest? And the person who has been working for us the longest would be the person in the employee table with the oldest or very first start date. Now we already know that start date is a field and we now we know how to follow the path to select a specific field and we've already used the correct modifier so let's write the code to select the oldest employee the record of the oldest employee who's been working for us oldest in terms of tenure not age we will start by selecting the table a period says we're ready to take the next step and the next step is the field we want to look at start date so far so good now which record do we want in this table we want the record that has the minimum the oldest or if you think about it on a, a stacked list if we stacked all the records of our employees with the first employee hired at the bottom of the stack <clears throat> and the last employee or most recently hired employee at the top the employee with the minimum with the lowest hire date would be the employee that's been working for us the longest we don't want to use the first I know we're trying to find the first employee we hired but remember in this context using this modifier the keyword first will only give us the first record in the selected table I don't want the first record I want the record that has the oldest start date the minimum start date we click OK we save our changes and there we go well yes and no we kind of got what we want I don't know who it is but I do know that the employee that's been working for us the longest was hired on September 2nd of 2016 I don't know exactly how many days that is I don't even know what the employees name is so it worked it did exactly what we asked Ninox to do we didn't ask it to do exactly what we wanted what we wanted was the name of the employee who was hired on September 2nd of 2016 so that statement is going to look a little different it starts the same way select and the name of the table that we wish to work with we're now going to introduce a new keyword and that keyword is where all lowercase as all keywords always are lowercase w-h-e-r-e -E, where the start date field is equal to September or 9 to 2016 select the record out of the employees table where the start date is equal to September 2nd 2016 and return again that's a path we've started down a path to a very specific record the record in the selected table the employees table where the field start date contains and that's what this equal sign gives us equals or contains the date September 2nd 2016 
select the record in the employee table that has the date that we know is the date that we hired the employee that's been working for us the longest. Well, that didn't work at all. It made sense, but in this case, our syntax was off just a little bit. Let me show you the right way to do this. Remember many, many lessons ago, we talked about compound statements. Statements or lines of code in Ninox where a single line of code is doing multiple things. This is a very efficient way to write good, clean, or what we call tight code but it's not a good way to begin writing code. I encourage you, if you're new to the coding language of Ninox or new to writing computer code in general in any language, don't work with a lot of compound statements. Make sure each line is doing one thing. And then in this case, since two things have to be done, we're gonna write two lines. What's the first thing that has to be done? We have to find out the date of the employee, the hire date of the employee who's been working for us the longest. We know how to do that. Select the minimum, well, let's do it this way. Select employees, specifically start date. And what I want you to select is the start date the record with the start date in the employees table that has the minimum date. Now, this by itself will return a value, but it doesn't allow us to utilize the value. To utilize the value, let's create a variable called x, and let's say that x will be equal to the record that is selected. This brings up the next point that I want to make about using the select statement. Remember I told you a moment ago, remember when I did this and I said select employees and we didn't see anything in the screen and I said nothing was returned? Well, that's not exactly true. Something was returned. We just weren't able to see it. What was returned was the unique ID number of each record in the table that we selected, the employees table. Now in this case, I'm going to be looking for a specific record. And that is the record that contains in the start date field the oldest or most minimum date. This does not appear to return anything except the date itself. However, if I do this, if I say let i equal or contain this value, we now have assigned the, the start date of the employee that's been working the longest to a variable called i. The next thing I'm going to do is now select this table, the employees table. Which record? The record where the start date equals i. And what I want you to return is the full name field. Remember we created a formula called full name. Full name is the concatenated result of the first name and the last name being added together with a space inserted between the two. That's what this line is going to return. It is going to return the full name of the record in the employee table where the start date is equal to i. And in the previous line, we defined i as being whatever date is the earliest date that appears in the start date field. And that returns to us 
Helen Galvin. Helen Galvin. Let's go check it out. Let's go back to our employees table. Let's go to the start date column and select it by clicking on the column header and selecting ascending to ascend to start low and go all the way up to the highest point, which means the lowest point in this case is September 2nd. And look who was hired on September 2nd. Record 47, Helen Gavin. If I wanted to know the name of the most recently hired employee, the employee that's been with me the least amount of time, we simply change the modifier to max. Now I is going to equal the most recent, the maximum date of all of the employees, the highest value among the 100 values in the start date field of the selected table. It's going to assign that date to the variable I and then select the record where the start date equals that date and return the name of the employee who was hired on that day. I don't know what the date is. I don't know the employee's name, but Ninox will tell me that it was Remedios Inez Roana Horacio. Let's go back and check and make sure Ninox is correct, and I'm sure it is. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. Remember, we sorted this list from low to high. I'll reselect the start date column and put it in descending order. To descend means to start high and go down to the very lowest. So if we start with the highest date, whoa, 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 whoa. What do we have here? We have two employees. Employees one in, in lines one and two. Employee number 45 and employee number 94, Roana Honorato in the accounting department. Two employees that were hired on September 30th. Now this is, in fact, the most recent date of our newest hire. No one has been hired after September 30th, but it only returned one record, the record of Inez. Why? Because Inez came first, and I did not specify. All I asked for was for Ninox to select this table, the employee's table, go to the start date field, find the date that is the maximum date or the most recent or highest numbered date, and return the full name of the employee whose start date equals that maximum date. What I didn't plan on was that there would be two employees hired that same day, and it happened to be the exact day I was looking for, the most recent date of hiring a new employee. So if we want, oh, well, that's why I look at that, folks. I wasn't paying attention, and I bet you weren't either. Remember a moment ago we talked about an array? This is not the name of one employee. This is the name of two. Notice the comma separating Inez Remedios from Roana Honorato. That comma indicates that two values, there are two answers to the question, who has been working for me the least amount of time? The person who has been working for us the least amount of time is the person who has the newest or most recent or maximum start date. There happen to be two records. So when I select, said select the records in the employee table where the start date is equal to the maximum date, it brought back two full names. Arrays are always presented in a comma delimited list. Inez Remedios is first because that was the first record that was found in the employee table, record 45. Roana Honorato was second 
because that was record 94. The second record that was encountered that had this date, the maximum date, which in this case was September 30th, that's the date that was returned. If, for example, Inez had actually been hired on October 16th of 2018, the formula would have returned just his name because he is the only employee that was hired on the maximum date. And in this case, the maximum date is October 16th. Roana Honorato is the second newest employee. Inez Remedios is the newest or most recently hired employee. We can specify, remember using the modifier, which record we want. In this case, we wanted the records of the employees hired on the maximum date. Let's go back and see how we can use multiple modifiers to create more complex select statements. Let's reset Inez's hire date back to September 30th. So we now have two employees that were both hired on the day of the most recent hiring. That day, that date being Sunday, September 30th, 2018. I'm getting two answers. I'm getting an array of two records, each record separated by a comma. What if I only want to know the last employee hired? Let's assume that we, if we hired two employees that day, the first one hired was in the morning. The second one hired was in the afternoon, which means technically, even though they were both hired on the same day, the last one hired that day is the one who is our truly newest employee. So in this case, where I used max to find the date of the last hire, I will use last, the last modifier to say, select the employee table, select all records where the start date is equal to whatever this is, whatever the maximum or most recent date of hire is, and then present the last name, or I'm sorry, present the full name of the last person, the last record hired on that day. And that brings us to Roana Honorato. So using these modifiers, these keywords like last and first, min and max, allows us to navigate to specific records with certain characteristics within a table. To review, if I want to select the very first record in a table, I simply say select name of table, the very first record. Now, in this case, we have to go ahead and add the parenthesis. If I want the last record, I can do it that way. I can make my path a little more explicit by not only naming the table, but the specific field within the table that I wish to look at. And then, in closing the select statement in parentheses, I can say bring me the first record. Now note what I just did. I was looking to select the higher date field in the employee table. And note the error message in the top left hand corner. Table not found. 99% of the time, if you are getting a table not found error in a select statement, 99% of the time you simply misspelled the name of the table. The name of the table is employees with an S. But now I have another error, field not found. The select employees statement 
passed. Nidox is okay with that. This failed. There is no field in this table called hire date. It's called start date. You must be explicit in defining the steps in the path, starting with the table, narrowing it down to a particular field. I can get the date of the first record in the table, the higher date of the last record. The minimum start date is the date that my first employee was hired. It doesn't matter what record it is in the table. The maximum start date is the date that my most recent or most newly hired employee was hired. And again, we can combine where I could say, select the last record of the employee hired on the maximum date. Select the employee table start date field specifically only records that have the maximum value at the end of this path and even more specifically the very last record that has that maximum value. Remember I talked about compound statements? Here's one right here. We have one statement that says let I equal select the employees table, notably the start date, and specifically the earliest, I'm sorry, the latest, most recent start date, and then select the last record in the employees table where the start date equals I. These are single lines of code that each do one thing. Identify the date that the most recent hire was done and select the last, the the last record of the employee that was hired that day. If I want to specify what I want returned, specifically the name of the employee. I don't just want the date. I want the name of the employee. We then will use the period to specify the field that we want. This is two lines of code, each line doing one thing. This is the exact same series of commands in a compound statement. And it helps if you get all of the right code in there. Okay, so let's look at these two lines of code in a compound statement. And remember I told you if you are going to build compound statements, build from the inside out. Let's start with the basics. Select the table. What do we specifically want? We want to select the start date field in this table. Remember, if you're getting a table not found or a field not found error, probably misspelled something. So let's correct that. We want to select this table, this field. We want the highest or most recent value in that field. And we want the last record that has that value in that field. And we then can specify the name of the field we want to return, whether it's the full name or something like that. This one compound line of code is doing the exact same thing that these two lines of code are doing. It is selecting a table and then following the path to the next step a specific field in the table. It is specifying only select records 
where this field contains the maximum value. And if there are more than one such record returned in the array, present only the last one, the one that it was added at the very end of all of the records that have this date. So here we see a little bit about compound statements. And better yet, we see our ability to add multiple keywords, multiple modifiers. Here we see last and max. If we wanted to see the first person entered on the most recent day that we hired people, we would change it to read like that. I think you get the idea. Now at this point, why don't you hit pause and write a couple of statements using multiple lines of code and then if you like, if you want to take a more advanced step, write a single compound line of code to select the first or the last, the min or the max, and look at some creative ways that you can combine these four keywords, these four modifiers that we can use in our select statements, first and last, min and max. I'm going to grab something to drink. You go ahead and practice, and let's get back together in a couple of minutes. Well, they should be done by about now. Okay, I'm back. So how'd it go? Hopefully you were able to build a couple of statements and you got it to work perfectly. So let's take our next step. Now, you will notice that these two statements are a little bit different. I didn't talk about this, and I'm wondering if you noticed it. Here we said select the table. Well, we did that up here also, so that's, that's the same. Here we simply defined the path. Select this field in this table and select the maximum value. Here we are saying select this table where this field contains that value. This becomes a qualification to be included in the array. To be included in this selection, you must contain this value, whatever the maximum start date is, in your start date field. Using the keyword where specified a criteria for inclusion. To be included, this is the criteria for inclusion. What is returned is this, the full name. In the statement, the compound statement, that appears on line one, there is no where keyword. There is no qualification to be included in the array. Well, that's not true. The qualification is it has to be the maximum or most recent hire date. What isn't included is an explicit statement of what is to be returned. Here we explicitly said the start date field is the criteria, the qualification to be included. The full name field is what gets returned. Here we simply said bring back this. And since the last thing loaded is the start date, that is what will come back. And as we now know, the date on which our most recent employee was hired was September 30th. In fact, two employees hired that day. Let's continue and let's add some new keywords and some new modifiers to our vocabulary in order to add some power and some additional oomph to our select statement. I'm going to go back into the employees table and I'm going to make a quick modification. Now, we do have this one formula field which is the age or the number of years the employee has worked for us. We have aged the start date. We can see that right there. What I want to know though is how many days an employee has been working for us. If I hired someone on September 29th of 2016 
and then hired someone the next day on September 30th, the age function will tell me that both of them have been working for me for a year. However, we clearly know that the employee hired on the 29th has been here at least one more day longer than the one hired on the 30th. To get specific to the point of days, we need another formula. Let's rename tenure, tenure in years, and I'll capitalize Y. And let's create a new formula called tenure in days. And this calculation will be our current date less the date of hire. And let's see what that's going to look like by, and let's still be in administrative mode, clicking on the rightmost column in our listing view and showing our newly added formula, tenure in days. And there it is. And there we see it. Both the employees hired on the 30th and the one employee hired on the 29th, they have both been with me about a year. Freya Emery, who was hired on the 29th, has been here longer by only one day than Remedios and Honorato, who were hired on the 30th, the following day. Now what I want to know, I know who I hired first. I know who I hired last. I know the dates that my first and last employee were hired. Now what I want to know is how long, on average, have all of my employees been working for me? Again, how do we begin select statements? With the word select in the name of the, employee, of the table we are selecting. Specifically, I want to know, I want to assess the values in the days tenure field. And the new modifier that we're going to use to do this is AVG, the abbreviation for average. We don't have to add up all the days that all of our employees have been working and then on the next line of code divide by 100. We can simply ask Ninox to select all of the records in this table, go to this field, and take the average of the values in this field for all 100 records or for all of the records in that table. And the answer is approximately 642 days and about 13 hours. Now we talked at the very beginning about building dashboards. Let's build a dashboard. Let's see, let's create a table for our first hire. Let's create a field for our first hire. And I want to know the name and the date of our first hire the name of the individual, and the date on which they were hired. And I'm going to do this in single lines. I'm not going to do this as a compound statement. Let us create a variable called n, and let's say that we're going to select the employees table, specifically the hire date field, Again, I've got this error, field not found. That's right, there's no field called hire date. It's start date. Whenever you get a field or table not found, and you will get them just about every time, it's because you've misspelled or mislabeled something. So go back and check that. I want to have the letter or the variable n equal the record or the date of the very first hire. Table not found. Ah, remember when writing code, order and cadence and syntax matters. I got the right words. I just put them in the wrong order. A select statement is always, always, always 100% of the time followed by the name of a table. So this should read not select minimum employees. It should read select name of table 
specifically the table with the the record with the minimum value in this field and let's call that variable n now that is the first the the date of the first hire now let's select the first record of all of the records in the employees table where start date equals n and specifically return the full name and let's assign that value to the variable f so there we go let's find the date on which we hired our first employee and put that into the variable n let us then find the first record in the selected table where this field the start date field contains the date that we now know from the previous line is the date on which we hired our very first employee if we hired more than one employee on that date I want the name of the first one hired because by only a couple of hours the first one hired is truly the oldest employee of I have working for me in terms of tenure the dot says take one more step in the path once you have found the record in this table where or that qualifies to be included and the, and the criteria for qualification is where this field contains that value once you found all of the records that meet the criteria to be included in the array in the array select the first one and the ID or in this case the name the identifier the full name of the employee with that start date in their record will be included will be added to the variable F now remember I said I wanted a couple of things I wanted the name of my first employee and the date on which they were hired enclosed in parentheses so let's do a little concatenation to get the answer that we wanted the name which is in the variable F concatenated with the text string space open parenthesis close text string plus that date that start date of the first employee hired on the first day that I started hiring employees plus the close parenthesis and let's see what that concatenated string of two variables F and N and two text strings space left parenthesis and right parenthesis what does that return that returns the name of the very first employee I hired on the very first day that I started hiring people and the actual date that the hire was made I am going to create now on my dashboard another formula which is going to be similar to this so I will go ahead and copy this code create a second formula I will paste this code and say that I want the last person hired on the last day that I did any hiring I'm gonna wait a second and have you answer the question how do I do that what needs to change on line one and line two so instead of getting the name and date of my first hire I get the name and date of my last hire if you said that min needs to become max which takes me from my first date that I did any hiring to the last or most recent date and first becomes last because I don't want the first person hired on that date I want the last person hired on that date you're correct good job and the concatenated return will be the name 
of the last person hired on the last date that I did any hiring with that actual date enclosed in parentheses and we will si assign that to a formula field called last hire and there is the results of our formula. Now I like things to be nice and neat and clean so let's space these fields down so they're nice and small. And in case you're wondering, we really don't need this text field for anything. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it at this point. Now there's another formula that I like to have, and that is the average tenure. How long, if you take all of my employees, what's the average number of days that they have spent working for me? And that would be selecting the employee table, specifically the tenure in days field. Make sure you spell it correctly so you can get rid of that error. And what I specifically want to do with this selection or this array of records is get the average of the values in that field. And that's that. Now we know, and, and let's label this field average tenure and days. So we know the name and date of our first hire, the name and date of our last hire, the average tenure of all of our employees. Now let's also look at some of the statistics that we can get out of our employees table. I want to know who works where and how many people are in each department. We have a marketing, an accounting, a product development, and a tech support department. Let's see how we can add some controls to enhance our dashboard to become a control panel. And what I mean by that is let's create a choice field and let's name that choice field department. If you're following along, go ahead and create a choice field on the screen, name it field, skinny it down to be as narrow as possible, and as soon as you've done that, click on the red wrench in the middle and add the following departments. The accounting department, the tech support department, the product development department, and marketing. It does not matter the order in which you create these four departments. Now that we have this control, this ability to define a specific department, I want to know who works in each department. We know that multiple people work in each department. And we know that a selection of multiple records in a, from a single table is called an array. So what I really want to see is an array or a list of all people who work in the specific department that I am selecting in this control. How do we do that? We go into administrative mode and we start with a formula. Remember, build from the inside out. And we begin with select and the table we're selecting. Specifically, select all records in this table, and what's the keyword for defining the criteria to be included in a selection? Where? Select all employee records in the employee table where the department is equal to, and you know what, instead of doing this as a compound, let's quickly create a new line one. Let the variable D equal the text value of that department control. Let D equal the name of the department selected in the department control. Select out of the employees table all of the records where the department is equal to the one selected in this control. Specifically, what I want you to return is 
the full name. And because this is going to give us a array, I'll stretch this out just like that. And to make it a little easier to look at, we'll just push that down to the second line and make this our very first control. So now I have a formula field, which I'm going to rename. Let's rename this selected department staff. Save our changes and exit administrative mode. And now whenever I select a staff, a department, I get the names of all of the staff who work in that department. This is pretty good. Okay, there's a couple more things I want to add to this dashboard. And we'll have a nice little human resource view or a human resource dashboard that allows us to have some basic statistics about the people who work in our company. The last thing I want to add is I want to know how many people work in each department. I know if I select a department who works in that department, but I want to use the select statement with a modifier to know how many people are in this selection. We're going to need a couple of formula fields, specifically one, two, three, four formula fields. Let's go ahead and add those. The first formula field is going to be Again, we always work from the inside out. So we start by selecting our table. Select employees where department equals accounting. Now, we're going to use a modifier to get the specific statistic that we want. And the specific statistic that we want is the count. C N T. I want a count of how many records, how many employees are there in this selected table where the department for that employee contains the value accounting. And I'm going to need this code in a moment, so I'm going to just, as long as I'm here, go ahead and copy it, select OK, name this field accounting department headcount and do that. The next field, also a formula field, I'm just going to change the name of the department to tech support. And this is my tech support department headcount. We'll need one for and the spelling must be correct, product, and it must be exact with capitalization. We have 28 in our product development. This is our product development headcount. And then finally, we have marketing. Don't want to forget marketing. So we'll change this to now be marketing. The criteria to be included in this selection is your department must be marketing. You must be, you must be an employee in the employees table. You must be an employee in the marketing department. And if you are, you will meet the criteria to be selected into this array. And we're then going to use CNT, the count modifier or keyword to count the number of records in this selection and it happens to be 18 and this is my marketing department headcount so we've got that and then finally we have our customer service department so we'll create a formula we'll paste our code we will change accounting to customer service. And this is our customer service 
department head count. And then finally, I'm going to create one more formula, which is all of these department head counts added together. And sure enough, it equals the 100, which is the exact number of employees in the company. So we will call this company total employee headcount and do that. And there we go. Now we have a nice little dashboard that shows us the date and name of the first and last hire, the average tenure in this case in days and hours of all 100 of our employees, a little control here that allows us to find out by department who works in each department, and a summary listing down here that shows us the total headcount in each department that make up the 100 employees in our company. So here we have the beginnings of a very nice human resource dashboard. Remember how we created it. We started by creating a new table called dashboards. Of course, you could call that table anything you want, but we stepped outside of the table that contained the data we wanted to analyze. Then everything we see here, every formula on this screen, on this dashboard, and these are all formulas except for this one control, Every one of these formulas utilizes a select statement. Here we select using min and first qualifiers or min and first modifiers to the select statement. Here we used the max and last to give us extracting the maximum value and the last person hired on that date. We used the select statement with the average modifier to perform a statistical analysis, the average number of days that all of our employees have worked for us. We broke each department down using this control and added this control panel component that allowed us to select employees who worked in the department that we had selected within that control again using the WHERE statement. Remember, the WHERE statement serves as the criteria, the qualification or qualifications that you have to meet to be included in the array. Once we have our array, we then can apply those modifiers, min, max, first, last, count, average, and we used all of those, those countings, here to understand how this total company headcount of 100 broke down. And finally, we created a footprint statistic that tells us what percentage each of these departments represents of the 100 employees in our company. That's all we're going to cover for right now, and we've covered an awful lot. We've looked at our select statement, we've looked at the syntax, the layout, and the different modifiers that we can use, min, max, first, last, count, average. We've looked at a number of modifiers that we can use to select arrays of data, which can be as big as all the records in the table, as small as one specific record in a table, or only those records that meet certain criteria. We've applied mathematic and statistical manipulations or transformations to all of the records in our selected array. And we've begun laying out those mathematic and statistical results on this single screen, which now is giving us a summarized view, a dashboard or a control panel into what's happening in our employees table. Imagine what you could do creating dashboards that look at your financial transactions table or your real estate property holdings table or any table that contains any kind of information. Using the select statement, you can now build these very powerful dashboards that help you understand what is going on in that table and allows you to extract information and intelligence that you can use in the operations of your organization or your everyday decision making. 
In the next video in the NINOX learning series, we're going to continue working with the SELECT statement, but we're going to apply it to a new screen element called a view. We're going to look at data views, and for the first time, we're going to look at graphic views. We're going to begin drawing charts, histograms and bar charts and line charts and pie charts. We're going to begin analyzing data in a graphic format as well as a numeric or textual format. We're still going to do it using the SELECT statement that we've started working with in this lesson, but we're going to take SELECT to an entirely new level, and with it we're going to raise the, the complexity and the power of our NINOX applications, again, to an entirely new level. All of this being done with a single six-letter word, SELECT. And that again points out the beauty of NINOX. It's both simple and powerful all at the same time. And hopefully these training videos are helping it become easy for you to use. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this class, and I hope you learned a lot in this class. And I really hope you'll join us in the next class, Building Views. That's it for now. Go out and build some great Ninox stuff. Come back and see us in the next class. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.